big guy. Um, obviously, you can't really really fully understand until you see him in person, but I've heard he's a big guy and he looks big on film. And uh, it's one of those things that when you're around him, you have to tackle the ball, especially with the player safety initiative, all that stuff. But he is going to be a tough guy to get down when you get to him. I think there's only four sacks so far in the season for them. Uh, but we know and we understand that first and foremost is stopping the run and how much they like to run the ball. And um, they ran the ball on us a lot last year in December. So, uh, and that was without uh, JT as well. A little bit. I mean, it's still the same play caller and stuff, so you, you definitely can get um, some of that stuff. But it's also two totally different teams in different situations than we were a year ago. Um, but it seems like even globally, people are just trying to run the ball more, especially on offense. And you just have to figure out what their favorite runs are of the week and uh, try to stop them in the best of our ability. And hopefully we get some points on the board and we can pin our ears back. TJ, how do you prepare for Jonathan Taylor? Because he's such a patient runner, but then can be really explosive through the whole we just have to get hats to the ball. We we have to like it's just everything we talk about each and every week is not playing superhero ball. Guys doing their jobs, not swimming backside of gaps because he is a slasher. He can lower his shoulder. He can be patient and juke outside when things look bottled up. Um, the Green Bay game, it looked like it was bottled up in the backfield, and he squirts out for ten yards down the sideline. So um, it's going to take getting everybody to the ball, and then hopefully the second guy coming in can come in with bad intentions with uh, trying to get after the football. Justin Field went on Cam's podcast and talked about your pregame speech in Atlanta. Um, are they always that fiery, or were you just really jacked up? Well, they're always pretty fiery. I mean, it just you guys know how much I love this game and what it means to me, and you just kind of use the week to prepare, and then on Sunday you kind of just let it all out and have a lot of fun. Is that something you've done more over the course of your career? Have you been doing this for a while? Uh, I wasn't giving speeches as a rookie, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I've been doing it for the last, like, I don't know, five or six years. You always throw your helmet? Or is that a uh, it's, it's week to week. Yeah, it, depend, it depends on what's going on at the time. TJ, what stuck out to you about DeMarvin, not only this season, but this week, do you feel like kind of questions that you've been asking? Does he, do you look at him as someone that's ready to play in a lot of snaps at that position? Yeah, I mean, this is his. it's not his first go around. Um, he's gotten live in-game reps at both end and at um, outside linebackers, so we're comfortable with that. He's He asks good questions. He has shown a lot of versatility in his pass rush moves, and obviously he can stop the run. He's a big guy. And uh, he's not just powerful like he looks. He has a lot of finesse to him, as you guys have seen. But uh, he's come a long way, and I, I'm really excited for him to get some playing time. Anything else? When you go back to Indy, TJ, did combine memories, memories come back at all when you touch down in that city and go to Lucas Oil? Or just, is there anything that? Not really. I mean, we go to St. Elmo's. That's always exciting. <laughs> Get to do that when you were at the combine? No, I don't think. Uh, an NFL uh, mission. More I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so. I was. It was just a tiring experience. The combine was a ridiculously tiring experience.